Queen Nanny of the Maroons was born in 1686 in present-day Ghana. She was a part of the Asante tribe. She was a spiritual healer, a warrior, and a leader. Western literature says Nanny and her four brothers were kidnapped and enslaved and taken to Jamaica. However, it is said by those that are closely connected to her that Nanny and her four brothers traveled on their own merit to Jamaica because Nanny had a vision that her people needed help. Her brothers were also leaders and warriors. So they ultimately joined forces and created what is known today as the Maroon. When Nanny and her brothers got to Jamaica, they split up. They created multiple Maroon communities within the Blue Mountain area. Her brother Cujo was the bravest and the most popular amongst her four brothers. Cujo was the leader of several battles in Jamaica. The area that Nanny and her brother Quao settled in eventually became Nanny Town. This community consisted of 500 acres of land and it was reserved for those who were formerly enslaved and for those who were trying to escape being enslaved. This land was in a strategic location. It sat right on a 900 foot ridge overlooking the Stony River. This made sneak attacks from the Europeans practically impossible. The Maroons also organized lookouts for potential attacks and they had warriors on deck ready to go at the sound of a loud horn called the Abang. While up in the Blue Mountains, the Maroons joined forces with the Arawak Tainos. Maroon communities survived by trading at Boston Bay, which was a popular location where meats were jerked and salt was made. They also raised animals and hunted and grew crops. Boston Bay was a profitable trading post and the British eventually wanted their parts. They refused to allow the British to continue to encroach on their land. This is what started the Great Maroon War. The Maroons were so confident in their skills and their ability to protect their land that they were the ones that declared war on the British. During the war, they raided plantations and freed those who were enslaved. In a span of 30 years, they freed almost a thousand people. Nanny was extremely adept at organizing these movements. After freeing enslaved individuals, the Maroons helped them to settle in their community. Nanny was known by the British and the formerly enslaved for being an outstanding military leader. It is said that Queen Nanny was highly skilled at catching bullets with her skirt, which is actually a highly developed form of art in certain parts of Africa. Her cleverness in planning guerrilla warfare confused the British, and for that reason, they were intimidated by Nanny. They knew that once they stepped foot on their land, there were so many different traps, and the Maroons were hiding in every corner and in every tree waiting for them. Queen Nanny's influence over the Maroons was so strong, it seemed supernatural. Many people believed it was connected to her spiritual power which is called Obia. She was deeply connected to African spirituality healing. This made Nanny extremely powerful despite being particularly small in size. She used her military skills and her Obia talents in order to successfully fight for liberation. Maroons helped hundreds of formerly enslaved individuals with no gun, no ammunition, and no military uniform. They were able to fight off the best soldiers of an empire that had an endless supply of sophisticated heavy artillery. Many times the Maroons were outnumbered 500 to 5,000 and they still claimed victory. One of the Maroons sacred sites was Nanny Falls in Portland, Jamaica. It is said that the water there has healing powers and that's where Nanny and her soldiers went to fortify before battle. Although Queen Nanny's skills made her an extraordinary warrior, it was her ability to stay grounded in and connected to her spiritual powers that kept her fearless and ahead of her opponents. Queen Nanny stayed untouchable for a long time. Queen Nanny's life and accomplishment has been recognized by the Jamaican government. She was honored as one of seven right excellence. She was the first and only female heroine of Jamaica. She's also pictured on Jamaican 500 dollars.